Hi everyone, my name is Aneta and welcome to my channel. Today I'll have a list of things to share with you. At the beginning of July I made an art supplies haul and I've done some watercolor swatches from paint samples I received. And of course I made also a painting inspired by summer, Japan and some movies I watched. But let's start from the art supplies. First of all, I had to get some pencils. I have a tin box with some Derwent pencils, which in my case didn't work, at least not the hard graphite ones. I know these short pencils look like they've been used a lot, but in reality I've only used them maybe twice. The graphite was fragile and they were constantly breaking while sharpening them. I don't know if they're just that bad in general or if I got a faulty set. I'm guessing the second option because the soft pencils were working fine. When it comes to my watercolors, I still have some space in my standard 24 Schminke palette, so I decided to fill the gaps with some Schminke Horadam half pans. And I actually regret the colors I've chosen. The set you see is an Academia palette and the new colors I bought are Ptalo Green number 591 made of pigment PG7 which is basically identical to the Academia 551 made also from PG7. I haven't checked the pigments and I ended up with two identical pans. Believe it or not, I never had professional watercolor brushes. In the past, I didn't care much and I didn't know a good brush can make a difference. These are Tintoretto brushes, they are synthetic and really soft. I'll leave you their numbers in the description. When it comes to my art supplies, I shop locally. I use a shop called Momarte. Uh, mind you, I'm based in Italy. They have good prices and a vast range of products. They also include some samples from time to time and this was the case. They sent me a MyMaryBlue.card which reminded me a lot of their intro set in tubes. The first color from the dot card is Transparent Arancio Pirollo or Orange Pirollo. <laughs> not sure how to pronounce it, made of PO71. The second one is transparent Lacca Quinacridone, Quinacridone Lake in English, I believe, made of PV19. This one is definitely a color I would choose if I was starting my adventure with watercolors in general. The third is a transparent verde oro, which is green gold made of PY129. Again, at the end I'll show you these swatches in daylight. This yellow is actually my favorite and it has a beautiful green undertone. Fourth color is a semi-transparent blue ultramare scuro, ultramarine deep, made of PB29. Again, a basic blue to pick if you start working with watercolors. Personally, I didn't find anything special about it, just a decent blue color for starters. Next, we have a semi-transparent turquoise di cobalto, which is cobalt turquoise, made of PB28. This is the actual color I would have chosen instead of the Schminke one. 
I really really like it and I bet it would look beautifully when mixed with a green one. The last sixth color from the top card is a semi-transparent Grigio de Pain, which is Pain's Grey made of PBK26. And I guess somewhere in the future I include a Pain's Grey in my palette. This blue undertone is mesmerizing. The last two were the previously mentioned Schminke colors. And don't ask me why I kept my left hand holding the dog card. I have no idea, never mind. The green color has a beautiful emerald feel to it and I'm sure it will look really interesting while mixed with other colors. I'm just disappointed it's basically a double, a substitute from the Academia range. The last one, neutral grey, was a Good choice. Again, it looks like a regular black, but it has a very subtle blue undertone. Although that paints grey above, well, we all learn from our mistakes. <laughs> My biggest item from this art haul was a Delaroni easel. I have a limited desk space and I struggle with neck pains lately. This easel can be rotated vertically and horizontally. It's very sturdy, I actually added some tension to it the same way I would add while drawing and it didn't budge. So far I used it for sketching and I managed to make a full sketch in one sitting, which is something that never happened before. One thing that I will change in the future will be to add some color to it. According to the description, it's made of oiled beech wood and if your hands are a tiny bit greasy, they will leave marks on the surface. I guess nobody likes that. Either way, this is not a big issue. For those of you who follow me, you know how much I like to use mixed media. I start with acrylic inks and I add details with some watercolor washes and gouache. I still feel like I haven't mastered this mixed media technique and every now and then I need to correct what I did. In my head I always have a clear plan of what I want to achieve but then my hand doesn't follow it. Among my new art supplies I bought two types of masking fluids. The first one is Liquitex for acrylic ink, but I bet I can use it for watercolors as well. And the second is Daniel Smith for watercolors. Now, I decided to use the Daniel Smith because I like the applicator it comes with and I wanted to reuse the packaging once it ends. I did use brushes in the past, I even tried some hacks with soap but it always ends up messy and the brushes get ruined anyway. What I'm trying to say, using brushes and masking fluid is a big no-no for me. Overall, I was doing well with the applicator part, except the masking fluid was terrible. I let it dry for like 10-15 minutes and it was almost impossible to take it off. I had to scrape it with the top of a brush and it took me like an hour to scrape every remaining bit. It was disgusting and unsatisfying. Is it only me or has any of you had this type of experience with Daniel Smith masking fluid? I swear I might try it on a different type of paper but I'm very close to throw away the content of that bottle and push something else inside. Anyway, I managed to scrape everything and I used masking tape to make windows. In the end it was the best choice as it allowed me to make straight lines. This is a painting completely out of my comfort zone. The inspiration came from watching movies by Yasujiro Ozu, which left me with many contrasted feelings. On one hand there was this nostalgia of simple life, on the other you have the tragedy of war and the tragedy of loss years after. 
Osu's movies are very crude and they force you to reflect a lot. It almost feels like every bright and joyful moment has a sad counterpart. There is, however, a particular scene that is being repeated often in many Japanese movies, including anime. It's a scene where entire families gather in front of their house in the summer to eat watermelons. Usually the watermelon pieces are very small and triangular, and it seems to me almost a symbol of summer in Japan. It also reminds me of my own childhood when I ate watermelons with my cousins in the countryside.
The rest of the painting was more pleasant to make. I particularly enjoyed painting the bonsai tree in the back. From a cultural point of view, I wasn't sure about the color of this girl's yukata. I know in Japanese culture people associate warm and darker colors with autumn and winter and they would wear bright colors in the summer so I was wondering if that orange was appropriate for the summertime. Overall this painting was a nice experiment to make. I'm happy about the storytelling element and color composition and I hope you like it too. As usual, thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you like this sort of content so I'll be motivated to post more and I'll see you next time, ciao!